Yeah, Freddie Fender Day, and that was okay. uh, that yeah. was to celebrate uh, his success yeah. with Wasted Days and Wasted Nights, and yeah, and everything else he did. Lone Star before Wars. the last teardrop falls, right? And he was a big Lone yeah. Star uh, Lone yeah. Star fan. So how did you hook up with him? And uh, tell us a little bit about the the, uh, the Harlingen event. We went back to uh, well, we celebrate we, him uh, in his hometown with a hometown parade, hometown hero parade. The man in Austin, Hector Guerra, that was the supervisor there, real good worker guy that helped me on everything in Austin there. His best friend was Freddie too. Actually, they both were from San Benito, which is a little town just south of Harlingen. And so Freddie always had a thing with Lone Star, with him, with Hector, and everything else. So somehow or another, just like with everything else, we just happened to, to hit it off together. We, we had a good time, that's all. Good. Freddie was into it. So we, they had Freddie, the San Benito and Harlington decided to have a Freddie a Fender Parade Day. So we joined in, helped fund it, and had a big time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And we had a lot of fun, and nobody got caught doing anything. <laughs> Used to run around a lot with Gary Stewart all the time and had loads of fun with him. And one time, Connie Nelson uh, in Austin called, uh, said that, that Gary was playing at the Poti Strawberry Festival, and that's about 30 miles south of San Antonio. And would we go to, did we want to go, Sally and I? And we said, sure. So we took her and her father. Uh, and we took her and her father, and we left our two kids at the ranch and went to see Gary Stewart and spent time and brought him back to Austin and party with him and everything. But we, I, every time he got near here, he called. Uh, people like Ernest Tubb. Lone Star was a personality beer like to these people. Ernest Tubb, every time he came to Texas, he would send me a poster, a, a 8 by 10 and say, Jerry, hi, I'm coming to Texas again. I'll be at so-and-so. Come see me. <laughs> You know, and Which meant like, bring the beer too. Uh, no, he just <laughs> he well he wasn't that much on the beer he as much as he was just a, a thing. But and of course I've been to his record shop with him in uh, Nashville and everything. Yeah, just down yeah. The, up the street from uh, Tootsie's Organ yeah. Lounge. Mm -hmm. I guess the most interesting thing, though, that really, really kicked off a lot was I had already, I had got my degree in marketing minor in psychology in 71 before I went to Austin. I got that to get in the sales department and I got in the sales department in December 72 and I spent the first eight months in West Texas and uh, then I got I wanted to go to the Coast Carpus and they transferred me to Austin. And I didn't want to go to Austin. They were northerners to me. And when I found out what's happening in music in Austin, I decided to, uh, to make my fun in music. And then I found, found out because I still had the connection with music all the time and reading everything, that Heineken's had been given the Grateful Dead and the new writers of the Purple Sage in San Francisco the Heineken's and they were drinking on stage and all the audience would follow. So I said to Armadillo, I started saying, wait a minute, well, we can try that here. So that's what we did. And and I mentioned of Lone Star, I found out we had Greasy Wheels, which was already doing Lone Star songs. So and every time they do it, everybody cheer and holler, hey, I want to hear about Lone Star. So Ray Benson just moved to town and I got Ray Benson. Oh man, I loved his music and he had a beer drinking crowd. Ray. So we hooked up together and I helped him get going on the road and we did commercials and everything else. That was, uh, they moved to Austin in I think 73 or 74. Mm hmm. And moved from Washington, D.C. and they bought Peter with him, that biker guy that used to hang around with Connie and Willie and them for a while. And they were all over the place. Yeah. Well, I, I met them in 75 because they had just signed a deal with Capitol after recording a couple mm -hmm. albums for Epic. Yeah. And I got to know the Capitol people, and I was one of the few people in L.A. that was interested in oh. Texas music. So they hooked me up with Ray and Asleep at the Wheel uh, really? at yeah. that point, and that's when we first met. It's like 40 years ago this year. Yeah. It's pretty amazing. That is amazing, huh? 
And, you know, we've stayed in touch over the years and just saw them a couple of months yeah, ago no, at the yeah. Austin City, Lim uh, City Limits taping. And uh, they're playing the uh, uh, Bob Wills Day up in Turkey. Oh, they're going to play uh, Turkey, this, yeah, this, sure. This coming try, weekend, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be a wild well, time. Well, his new album there is quite a deal, too. That yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, yeah. Still the King, Bob yeah. Wills. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got that. I was number one on Amazon for weeks already. It, it was, yeah. I don't know, I don't know if it's still yeah, it. It actually debuted on the pop charts. Pop charts. On the Billboard <laughs> pop charts, I think at number 14 or something, which is pretty ah. off the hook. Yeah. You know, for a, for a record like that, it's, it's it kind sure of, is. you know, target a, targeting a niche audience, if you yeah. will. But it's really a great record, and it really does it's capture right. a lot of the essence of Texas music, Texas well, music it's got history. everybody on it. The multiple got generations. Willie Arnett, it's got everybody on it. Well, what I like about it is, is, is that you've got, you've got um, and the, they're not always the obvious songs. I think the most right. obvious song on the album is Faded Love, right? Uh, well, and the Roy and, Rogers song. And the Roy, well, okay. <laughs> But what I really liked about uh, that record was the, the multi-generations thing. Right. You've got yeah. the Quavy sisters, and yeah. you've got the Abbott, you know, those yes. Abbott guys. And, and then you've got the, the mid-range guys, you know, the Asleep at the Wheel guys. And then you've right. got the guys that are a little older, you know, the Willie yeah. and, and his generation. And, and right. then you've got the original Texas Playboys, Leon Roush. Leon Roush. And uh, Billy Super Briggs guy. Yeah. On, on the record. And they're in the like 80s and 90s, you know. Yeah. So it's really neat to see that. Uh, exchange between the generations between and how generation. the one generation passes it on to the next one, and it's going to keep going as long as. Uh, well, see, the Austin scene was people being people, and but the people that are already people were people like Kenneth Redkill and Leon Roush. I mean, Leon Roush was God. Every time I saw him, it was like golly, we've known each other all our lives, and uh, come hug me real quick and hold my hand and talk to me and everything else, Jerry. You know, what I mean, it just. It was that ambiance of feeling like we had at our party yesterday. Everybody just felt good. Right. Nobody said, hey, God, I'm better than you. I didn't notice anybody acting like they were any better than anybody else. I didn't notice that either. Everybody checked their egos at the door. <laughs> and that's what they did to Armadillo, I promise you. Right, right. <laughs> It was, I had a bunch of friends at the Secret Service that worked with LBJ, and we had them at the one night end of all, when they'd all come in in their suits and stuff, everybody would get scared, but we assured them everything was okay. Whoa, <laughs> that must have been a little freaky. Uh, that was because Willie was doing a benefit for the one night that night. And right. It was, we, they had a whole row, and it was kind of funny. Yeah, kind of scared a few people. <laughs> but it's okay, we told them everything was cool. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, okay. thanks, Jerry. I think uh, I think that'll do it, eh? Yeah, I think so. I covered everything. I bought a whole bag here. I didn't know what to do. I was just going to show you. I didn't know what the hell we were going to do with it, but we did it. Well, hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs>